So, limit definition of the derivative. Remember our steps. We've got to start by finding f of x plus delta x. That means that in our original function, everywhere we see x, we are going to replace it with x plus delta x. So, to help you with that, I'm putting just the skeleton of my function. I'm leaving out the x's because I'm going to replace them with x plus delta x. Okay, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with x plus delta x. Now, let's simplify this. Let's try and get this in uh, the simplest form that we possibly can. Um, so what happens when we have x plus delta x squared? Is that equal to just x squared plus delta x squared? No, what do we have to do with that? We've got a FOIL. Okay, we've got to write it twice and we've got a FOIL. So we have a negative 3 in front of that. So let's FOIL this out. First times first is x squared. The outside gives us x times delta x. The inside gives us x times delta x. So we have two x times delta x's. And then we have delta x times delta x. So that's delta x squared. We need to distribute that negative 5. Now it is very, very integral that you are very careful with your signs when you're doing these. Because sometimes if you mess up one sign, You've messed up the whole problem. Okay. Distribute the negative 3. Negative 3x three squared minus 6x delta x minus 3 delta x squared minus 5x minus 5 delta x plus 3. Okay, um, it would be great if we could simplify something here, but we really don't have any like terms. Okay? We have x squared and delta x squared. Those are not the same. We have an x delta x that's not the same as just an x or just a delta x. So that's really as, as simple as that will um, be. But here in a second, when we put it into the limit definition, it will simplify some more, okay? Yes? The outside and the inside, I had x delta x on the outside and x delta x on the inside. So when you put them together, you have two of them. When I foiled this, the outside gives me x delta x, the inside gives me x delta x. So we have two of them. Okay, so again, I'm going to rewrite the limit definition of the derivative. The limit as delta x approaches zero, so as the change on my x's is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, this, the slope of the secant line is approaching the slope of the tangent line. So I'm going to write it in general forms first. You don't necessarily have to write down this part, although it is probably a good idea just to get in the habit of seeing it. Okay, that is the general form of our limit definition. The work that I have there in green is the f plus delta x part. So the limit as delta x approaches zero of, and I'm going to keep it in green, negative 3x squared minus 6x delta x minus 3 delta x squared minus 5x minus 5 delta x plus 3. Yeah, these get a little long, but the polynomials are the only ones that do. Minus f of x. Now it is very important that we put f of x in parentheses because it is following that subtraction sign you must apply that negative to everything following it. If you don't, then things are not going to work out as they should. 
Okay, now we get to simplify. Now, for the purpose of just being totally clear right now, I'm going to take an extra step to rewrite my f of x plus delta x and to actually show where I distribute the negative. So that becomes plus 3x squared plus 5x and minus 3. So now, look at what happens. We have a negative 3x squared plus 3x squared. Those cancel. We've got a minus 5x and a plus 5x. Those cancel. We've got a plus 3 and we've got a minus 3. Those cancel. So let's write what we've got left. We have negative 6x delta x minus 3 delta x squared minus 5 delta x. That's all over delta x. We got two steps left, technically really just one. This is finally where we, if you remember writing down the steps, I said you need to factor out a delta x. This is where that comes into play. We didn't have to do it yesterday because when we simplified, we only had one term left in the top, so we really didn't factor it out. This is where you have to factor it out, okay? Um, so all three of those terms in the numerator have a delta x. So I'm going to take that out of those three terms. So we're left with negative 6x minus 3. There's still a delta x there because it was delta x squared minus 5. Now we can cancel those delta x's. And when we do that, we have removed the issue of plugging in 0 for delta x because we no longer have it on the bottom. And then we can just plug it in. We can plug in 0 for delta x. So our final answer is negative 6x minus 5. Negative 6x minus 5. So what this is saying is that the derivative of the function of the quadratic negative 3x squared minus 5x plus 3, its derivative is negative 6x minus 5. So the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. So this linear function is representative of all the slopes of the tangent lines to the curve. So what we're going to do with this after we uh, get used to calculating these derivatives, what's going to happen is that if we want to find the slope of the tangent line at 2, we take our derivative, we plug in 2, and so the slope of the tangent line at 2 for this function is what, like negative 17? Okay, it's really steep. Um, but at 0, the slope is negative 5. It's not quite as steep. Negative 5, 6. Yeah, at negative 5, 6, the slope would be 0. The slope of 0 is a um, horizontal line. Guess what? Negative 5, 6 is the x coordinate of the vertex of this function. If you remember that um, from way back when, negative b over 2a, negative 5, 6 is the vertex. So we're, we're going to keep developing those ideas, but right now you just need to know that this is the derivative of that function. So it gives the slope of any tangent line to that curve. Yes? Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So I want you to.